going on everybody welcome back to uh the league report pod it's just me and carl today blake is out i think he's got the flu right now yeah yeah some some something like he could he yeah so uh no no <laughs> flu game for blake he, he may be he may be back by next episode so it's just us two um a lot of stuff to talk about first off i'm gonna give a couple of quick little college basketball shout outs i don't know how much of how much of college basketball you've been watching so far but i'm gonna shout out that dude paulo bancaro or banchero from duke i may be saying his name wrong uh but that dude's a hooper um just premature thoughts i'm thinking that he's Without a doubt right now, as as we are right now, I think he's without a doubt the best prospect in this class. As I said, it's a lot of time left. Everybody's played pretty much one game, but that dude's been amazing. Uh, Monty yeah. Bates has been great. Uh, who else Who else has been standing out so far with college? I know we're really, yeah. like, just two. The, 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 the Gonzaga dude, the tall, uh, oh, yeah. what's his name? I be forget his name. Uh, Chet Holmgren, I think that's how you say it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he had like seven blocks in his first game, uh, and that those may be the 14. main guys. I'm, yeah, yeah, he had 14, like 14 points. points. Yep, yeah. I'm trying to think about some other guys who stood out. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there may be a couple more. Um, I'm not really thinking straight, but shout out to all those guys. Uh, I'm a little pissed that my Wildcats couldn't get the win against Duke. I don't, I don't, I don't really know how good we're going to be this year. I'm not really sure about it, but uh, all that will take care of itself. You never know with college basketball. Um, so, yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to kind of get into and talk about, I'm mad Blake isn't here to talk about this because I feel like his perspective on it would have been funny as hell, uh, but the Nicole Jokic and Markeith Morris situation. Break down what happened for us with that situation, Carl. Okay, so we got, you know, Denver, if I'm correct, my, if I'm wrong, Denver was basically whooping the he's ass. Like, they were blowing him out, weren't they? So they were blowing him out, and Jokic took exception to the little cheap foul that Marquise Morris gave him a little nudge in the back. I didn't think it was that. It was it was a little cheap, but I don't think it warranted you just, you know, yeah, yeah. the whole form in his back. But, yeah, so Jokic reacted, and he waited for him to turn his back, and he pushed him in his back, like, enough hard enough to <laughs> basically give him whiplash. That's how hard yeah. he pushed it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that caused a little feud. Then we got Jimmy Butler. You know, he was ready to bang. You know, his hood, the hood was coming out of Jimmy Butler. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was rep, he, he was repping his set. <laughs> what, what, what was he saying? He was saying come to the back or something like that. He said, he said, he said, come to the back. Come to the back. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh shoot, he was going like, off. Like, Cause I'm like you. Yeah, but like you said, they ain't about to fight. You know, I you yeah, know, nah. say that they ain't about to fight no Yeah, fight. they ain't about to do nothing. Them Jokic, but them Jokic brothers finna do something. Them boys about that business, boy. <laughs> don't, don't don't mess don't mess with them foreign dudes, bro. No, nah. hey, especially them especially them Serbians, bro. I told you, I don't know if Khabib is foreign is Serbian, but the, he wrestles bears to train and all that stuff. So I don't yeah. think. He's, he's, I think he is. Yeah, he, he's yeah. pretty tough. He's yeah. You don't want to mess with him, bro. Yeah, them Serbian dudes ain't nothing to mess with. Don't let Jokic his nice little persona. That boy, that boy probably tough as hell. So don't let don't let it fool you. Don't let it fool you. I, I gotta he, see the fight he, though, he, man. He'll yeah. whoop you with a smile on his face. Right. So who you got? All right. So who do you have in the head of fight? Let's let's keep it a buck. Do we have uh versus we have Mark Markeith Morris versus Marcus Morris and the Jokic brothers? Who we got in the head of fate? See, the, the Morris brothers can actually fight better than them. It's just a matter of they're so big, they're hard to put down. Yeah, it'd be like it'd be like Tyson. They're like Tyson Fury size, but they can't probably fight as good as him. But they're just so big and hard to knock down. So I don't know. Yeah. It'd be a good fight. Yeah, yeah it'd be a hell of a fight. It's not gonna happen. It's, there's no way it's gonna happen yeah. at all. But yeah, the people want to see it. It's not gonna happen though. I wanna, uh, I wanna say WWE put like a thing up for WrestleMania. And yeah, Yogi's brothers and Marky. Yeah, said WrestleMania. <laughs> Yeah, that shit was funny as hell. Now, that ain't the first time they went crazy. I, I knew they were crazy after, was it Phoenix or something like that? I think Jokic pushed. Yeah. No, he didn't Jokic even push pushed, anybody. Uh, he No, he, yeah, he like, I think he, he fouled him. He fouled him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mikhail, was it Mikhail? No, it was Payne. It was Payne. He fouled Payne. Hammer Payne, oh. yeah. And then they yeah, were ready Devin to get Booker, up out the seats. Yeah. Devin Booker was going to do something, then he kind of bagged up, realized what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I'm telling you, them boys ain't nothing to play with, man. Them boys ain't nothing to play with. Uh, but shout out, to, I think Jokic did his one game suspension last, I think it was yesterday. So he'll be back in the lineup. Uh, Denver's actually been pretty good this season. We talked, we talked crap about him last episode, but they've actually been pretty good. So uh hopefully uh they can get him back on track. Um, a couple things I want to talk about. Last night we had a very, very impressive game. Uh, me and you were texting back and forth with it, but it was the Heat versus the Lakers. Uh, give us your reaction to that game last night. I think Jimmy Butler was out in that whole second half, was it? 
Yeah, he he came out in the first quarter. He twisted his ankle, so he probably right. nothing. He couldn't put he couldn't put weight on it, so they just said whatever. We had decision to see how you doing, you know, tomorrow yeah. or whatever. Yeah, um, Melo came out firing away. He was making some you know big threes, start the game off. Then he kind of got cold, and then that's when Malik Monk picked it up. I think Malik Monk and Russ combined for like twenty three points in the fourth quarter. So that that definitely helped us. And Malik Monk had like twenty seven. He only missed like he only missed yep. like four shots. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, Russ, with Ty, Ty's boy Russ, I've been talking about him. He came along at the end, yeah. you know, made some nice baskets, but I just knew when he had the ball in the fourth quarter, I was like, no, that shot's not going in. Don't yeah. give him the ball to win the game. He, he don't got it like that no more, bro. And yeah. he then turnovers. He had a, I think he almost had a quadruple double again. Really? Yeah, he had eight turnovers, but I saw 10. I think they'd be in dinner. Yeah. So yeah, I I remember that last play too. I, I gotta give I'll give the Heat credit for that last play because it kind of looked like uh Westbrook or the Lakers really just trying to hunt like Tyler Hero and put Hero end up getting Hero in a situation where he got a Westbrook. So I think it was good coverage more than anything else. But uh yeah, I mean he had a great fourth quarter. I mean, you know, minus that missed shot, you know, we talk about the two, like I think he had two mid-range jumpers. He had one coming like straight off the dribble, then he had like a turnaround mid-ranger, uh, yeah. maybe to tie it or maybe to put him up by a little bit. Um, that's what yeah. you want to see, you know. And this this is the thing about this Lakers team. We'll talk about Malik Monk in a second, but they've had a lot of time and a lot of opportunities to show that they can execute down the stretch. I, we talked about a couple episodes ago. I really want to see these contending teams show the ability to come down the stretch and play big, you know, in late fourth quarter situations. It's one thing when you're blowing everybody out during the regular season, but when you're together with your players and all that and with your teammates and you have to go through adversity or whatever, um, you know, and you have to execute late in the fourth quarter and all of that, that's only going to be that's that's only going to be super helpful, especially when it comes down to bigger games or those playoff situations. And they haven't been perfect, you know, but they've been in their fair share of those types of games. And we've seen what, you know, guys like Malik Monk can do. You know, Malik Monk was dope as hell last night. And that wasn't his first time performing well in the clutch, you know, for this Lakers team. I think he did it against the Spurs maybe at yeah. some point this season. Yeah, I he think had so. like 30. He had like 30 against the Spurs or something near yeah. 30. It, it was at least yeah. 25 points. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 No, I, you know, they, yeah, they, they definitely had a lot of opportunity. I mean, even did they beat Charlotte uh, the other night? Because I know they had an overtime yeah. game against Charlotte. Yeah, barely they beat you know, but yeah, bro, I, I looked, they was winning by 10 with three minutes left. I saw Lakers win overtime. I'm like, what? They gave up the Yeah, game. yeah. They sure did. And that's something they have to get better at because we have seen them drop. We saw them drop a lead against OKC what twice this season. You know, we yeah, yeah. One, 126 and 119. Same yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> So while I can talk about their ability to play well in the fourth quarter and late in games at the same time, you've got to be able to hold on to those leads. Now, at the same time, LeBron hasn't been there, you know, so you got to kind of factor that in. I think, you know, I, I may have just forgot that LeBron wasn't there. And that may sound disrespectful as hell to say, but I forgot that he was there. But, you know, you got to be able to hold on to those leads because that's stuff that we can also see hurt you in the playoffs. And, with, you know, with the NBA, it ain't never over till it's over. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't even turn a game off. Let's say somebody's up by like 30, you know, in the first half. I ain't even comfortable turning the game off because you never know what's going to happen in that second half, especially during the regular season. Yeah, man, the way they shoot threes nowadays, you can cut a 15-point lead down to nothing probably within the next two minutes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So holding on, to, yeah. hold on to the lead is going to be very important for that team. And like I said, a lot of that could be due to the point that LeBron isn't there. But I don't want to give them too much of an excuse because the reason you the primary reason they went out and got a Russell Westbrook was for injury insurance. You know what I'm saying? And so there's also kind of a question, is Westbrook really fulfilling that role? And we're going to kind of see that question being answered over the next couple of games when LeBron is out. You know, can Westbrook step up, you know, and be that, you know, perimeter guy and that yeah. shot creator and that facilitator, you know, until LeBron gets back? He should be yeah. able to do that because it's Russell Westbrook, you know, but yeah. that's the thing we got to have answered, you know, moving forward over these next couple of games i think the thing with russell westbrook when he's on your team you just gotta be prepared for the good and bad like you yeah. gotta be prepared just to, you have to stay even killed because if you expect him to play good without any anything you know any turnover anything you're gonna that's gonna take some life off you yeah. some life yeah some years out of your life that's what i'm trying to say yeah, so yeah. you better just stay even killed when looking at russ because one game he can play great the next game you're like what what are yeah. you doing and so, you, this, this is something you say all the time. When he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's really bad. There's really he, no in between. When he's bad, he is bad. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, like I said, I mean, last night was good, you know, and there have been some other nights where he's been pretty good and he's gotten his triple doubles and he shot it efficiently. You know, last night also he shot it pretty well from three. I think it was like maybe three for seven. Um, And he has been showing mm -hmm. a willingness to, put, you know, he has been showing a willingness to put those three-point shots up, you know, throughout the season. So if yeah. he can try to get it to a reasonable percentage, I don't know how possible that it is. Yeah, you, yeah, it's probably. He's, 
He's just not. He's just not a good shooter anymore. Even when yeah. he was a, even when he was a good shooter, he still would struggle with threes at times. So yeah, yeah. It's like, but Avery, I want to say Avery Bradley had some big shots to uh, start off the game too. He had like, yeah. At one time, he had like three or four threes in a row. It, it was three. Yeah. It was had yeah. three threes in a row, and then he banked one in in the fourth quarter to cut the lead down yeah. to three. Even yeah. though it was luck, but yeah. that's another one. Hey. Luck shot a hard, a hard, a hard shot. It was luck. Yeah. He yeah. really bricked it, but he got lucky and banked it in. So yeah, yeah, he's another valuable addition. And I remember really, really early in the year he wasn't really getting any playing time, but now like looks like they want to kind of start doing the thing. Where we're starting AD at the five now, and then he's going to be out there with those small ball lineups. We talked about it last night. You know, the idea is to kind of get a defensive edge early in the game by having him in that starting lineup. Um, and and I think he's been able to do just that. He showed his value off. Um, the numbers aren't really eye popping, but it's just the little stuff that he goes out there and does. Uh, that's very, very important. Um, but like I said, I think this is very good for this team because it puts your role players in a position to where they have to perform. And that's something we see with championship contender teams all the time. You know, the question is always, even when you've got your big three or your big two or whatever that's going to be, what are your guys outside mm-hmm. of that big three or big two going to be? That was a question with the Lakers when they won a title a couple of years ago. So now they have this great supporting cast. Um, we've seen too many flashes of how good Malik Monk is or how good, you know, every Bradley is. And, you know, Austin Reeves is going to be out for a little bit, but when he's in the rotation, he's pretty good. And then as you yeah. mentioned a little bit earlier, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, Melo has been amazing this entire season. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, it's, it's, while LeBron is out and while injuries are an issue, it's good for them uh, and their role players to show off their ability to perform because once LeBron gets back and once his team starts getting a little bit more serious about everything, um, you know, you're going to need those guys uh, to perform with their numbers called. And, and, and I think right now they're going to get they're getting enough reps to do just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely are because this, I think this is why the reason they sign so many, what's the right word, kind of scores. Yeah. You know, in the off season, you know, those mm-hmm. those bench players that can just, you know, predominantly score because they yeah. kind of fear they're getting up there in age and injuries with LeBron. AD's yeah. not going to stay up. So they, they're just trying to find that balance of people that can score when players like that are out, if that makes right. sense. Insurance, 100 percent is insurance. And yeah, it begs yeah, the true. question. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's still always this debate if the Lakers should have went out and got Buddy Hill. Like people are still saying, I think Blake made a tweet. Um, you know, where he said, uh, you kind of asked, you know, should the Lakers have gotten Buddy Hill? Looking back at everything, should the Lakers have gotten Buddy Hill? And then you kind of ask the question, yeah, Russ hasn't been his best self, but I don't think I'd be as confident yeah. in their supporting cast if Buddy Hill would be asked to be that third option, that primary shot creator out there versus a Russell Westbrook. Because yeah. like I said, when Westbrook's good, you know, which you can always hope for, you know, like when he's good, he's one of the best players in the NBA, you know, so if you're able to yeah. get that outside of a LeBron and AD, you know, that's, that's better than what Buddy he was going to be able to offer you. Yeah, I think probably Russ' efficiency probably went down when he started playing with uh, Paul George and Carmelo. I feel like yep. that's when it started kind of going downhill because that MVP season, everybody know that that he was like, yeah. he was damn near perfect. But yeah. after when when Melo and what's name drum, it's like he he tried to get them to involve so much, he kind of lost his flow of the game and flow how he chose the balls. So I don't know. I don't know if that, how you feel about that. That's like when you think he. I agree. I feel like since his MVP year, Westbrook hasn't ever been comfortable. You know, like that. I'm glad you mentioned the year with Melo and Paul George. Man, it 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 took that team wasn't a really good team during the regular season. They had stretches, but they were a very disappointing regular season team. Remember, they got first round against Utah, and a lot of it was because they just couldn't find a way to make yeah. a fit together. And a lot of the issue was too, Melo wasn't catch and shoot Melo when he went to OKC. Melo was coming off of, a, 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 you know, his time in New York where he was used to being the best player and they were working to try to get him integrated into that offense and it never really worked. Then we talk mm-hmm. about, then we talk about Houston, you know, th- I mean, yeah. that took a minute, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then it was, it was, it was mid, mid-season, I'm my bad, but it was mid-season yeah. with Houston. He like, you know, he started to, you know, drive a lot. He was, I remember mean, it was a stretch. He had 35, 36, yeah. he had 40 in one of them stretches. Yeah. So he was doing it, but then it kind of went back down to earth. Yeah. Because he you yeah. can tell he just wasn't comfortable standing in the corner being a three-point shooter because he's not. So. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of that was because they made the moves to uh, go small and kind of clear the paint out for him. And then, like, like you said, as they went to the playoffs, they started facing teams that had good enough individual defenders to keep him out of the paint. So he was doing a lot of sitting out there in the three-point line, just being ineffective, you know, and all that. So, yeah, I mean, it just, just never seemed like, you know, we can put the blame on him as much as we want to, but it just never seemed like Westbrook was in any comfortable situation post his MVP year. Like I said, the closest he really came to being super comfortable was in maybe that year Paul George almost won MVP, you know, like I think that's the year after Melo got dealt away. Um, yeah, yeah. 
and and that's that's pretty much just about it you know i mean we'll see what happens this year but you know it's still it's you know we're still trying to get them integrated and like i said there have been great flashes so far so it's still going to be a process yeah crazy thing is you remember Melo was a hawk for a day remember that remember he went to the Ooh, Hawks, but he really never what? he never really went there they got rid of yeah. him like right away he was he was a uh he was a rocket too like people forget he was in houston for like a couple weeks, maybe he. I remember he played in the preseason, and not. I mean, not, maybe a couple months actually. Then they just cut him, and yeah. that was kind of the beginning of the entire, uh, you know, Melo's watch narrative and all of that. Yeah, he was. He did some weird stints. Melo did some really weird yeah. stints after New York. Yeah, I know Quavo got that uh, Carmelo jersey that he never yeah. had to play. He got it. Yeah, actually. that's kind of weird. But yeah. Um, another player I wanted to mention too, uh, Wayne Ellington. He had some big shots last yeah. night too. If he if he can if he can give us probably. You don't even have to give us that many points. You can just play a little defense, probably give us seven to ten points. That's good enough right there. That's good enough. And, and that's I'm glad you mentioned him because three-point shooting is a team we're all, a thing we're always going to mention when we're talking about the Lakers. Last year they sucked at it. Year before they sucked at it. Now I think they're top ten in three-point shooting efficiency, you know, and that's because of guys yeah. like Wayne Ellington and Avery Bradley and uh um, you know, Malik Monk, you know, who hasn't been amazing, but when he's having those great games, he can knock down uh, threes at a really high efficient clip, you know, knock down probably like three or four of them. So I'm, they, he's a he's a great guy to mention because, like I said, he, they have a lot of shooters. We knew this. You know, we knew you know, after the Russell Westbrook, uh, after the Westbrook trade, we were kind of wondering, you know, how many guys that, you know, if they were going to be able to stretch the floor and knock down shots. Then they went out and got a whole bunch of dudes who could shoot. Mello, yeah. who's shooting it like, I think Mello's like 60% in Staples yeah. Center. You know what and I mean? He's shooting, he's shooting 50, 50. He was after last night's drop. So he's shooting about 50% from three. Yeah. Yeah. Center, and like 30 some percent from other. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So all of those like it's just people criticize the Lakers because they say they're quote unquote buying championships. But, you know, they went out and got the right guys to surround around this big three. As I said, this roster is set. You know, it's just a matter of trying to it's really a matter. And somebody just made this quote today. It's a matter of making Westbrook comfortable as possible and getting him right. And once Westbrook is right, this team's going to be unstoppable. And it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, you know, once LeBron gets back, because if I kind of feel like Westbrook's had his best games when LeBron wasn't on the team. You know, or when he wasn't active. Yeah, because they played against the Spurs. He had like 30. Yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. So it's kind of like, you know, that's still a question. If When LeBron gets back, you know, what are we going to do? You know, systematically, there are still some things that need to be answered. I remember somebody gave me a clip where they're saying, somebody said, uh, where they're going to start running pick and rolls between Russ and LeBron, where they're going to have Russ be the role guy. But it seemed like that was just a one game thing. So there's still, I made that, I said yeah. that, I said that to make the point that there's still not a set thing they're doing right now that there's still not something we've seen that's the best you know as far as pairing LeBron and Russ on the court together there are still things we have to see so you know and I don't know what LeBron's timetable is I think it's maybe like they say two weeks or a week or something like that it, it was a week so probably within the next three or four games he just start playing again but yeah, yeah. it's yeah I would like for them to, if it's a way for Russ to stay more in the paint instead of being on a three-point line I know it's gonna be hard because he's a guard yeah. But yeah. to me, he works better when he's in the paint or when he's yeah. like out like 15 to 20 feet shooting. Yeah. Range yeah. That's more of his game. Yeah. And then and that's part of the benefit of having, you know, an Anthony Davis, you know, as your starting five. Now, DJ, and, and I don't know what you know, DJ and Russ is plus minus is when on the court together. Sometimes they look good, you know, because he's able to get those lobs to him and everything and they run pick and roll. But having AD out there, you know, you can kind of get somewhat of a Houston Rockets thing where, you know, you're almost going five out on offense and you're just letting Russ drive to the rim and do whatever the hell he wants and just stretch the floor around him. So maybe that's part of the benefit of having, you know, Anthony Davis at, at the five now and going yeah. small. But, uh, you know, they still, you know, you still have to see things work out as far as fitting Russ and LeBron together. And that's going to be, as I said, it's going to be the biggest question that's going to be answered. That has to be answered at some point. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll just say one more thing before we go to the next topic. Uh, Ron, I don't ever want to see Rondo and Russell Westbrook on the court at the same time. Rondo's hurt right now, so he's going to come back eventually too. But I don't yeah. ever want to see them on at, because it's like, bro, it's pointless. They're not yeah. great shooters. And what are yeah. you doing? Dude? Yeah, I'm glad. And I think that's one adjustment he did make because I don't I don't remember seeing him on the court a bunch after you made a point. You said that a couple episodes ago, and he didn't really do it after that. Um, you know, he must have been he must have been watching. He, he, he may have been watching the league report. He, he may have been watching, and, and also too, you know, that's one thing you have to give Frank Vogel credit for is 
he has one, you know, he has a lot to work with, you know, as far as trying to craft his offense and make it fit, you know, well with West, Russell Westbrook and LeBron and AD and also lineup management. You know, we always knew it was going to be tough for him to figure out who's going to be in the rotation, who's not going to be in the rotation. And he's managed it to to some degree at, at, at a pretty good rate. You know what I'm saying? I think also yeah. there's still there's still some questions to be answered because we haven't really seen Kendrick Nunn yet and we haven't seen THT yet. So yeah, how are we I forgot about Kendrick. Whoa, yeah, that's dude. They, I was telling somebody this the other day. They literally have everybody from top to bottom can literally play on any given night. Exactly. Exactly. Trevor Reza, so Trevor Reese is hurt. Trevor Reese. Yeah. So there's a lot he has to work with, and there's still questions to be asked about that rotation. But I like the way he's managed stuff as far as late games. Like I think last night. You know, that late game lineup was perfect. You know, a lot of times we'll see coaches make very questionable decisions as far as who they're putting in their late game rotation. But I think, you know, how he managed it and how he's managed it over the last or over a set amount of games so far this season has been pretty good. So some I, I got to give Bob yeah. credit, you know, and it's almost the same thing with Steve Nash, right? You know, with Steve Nash last year, you know, he had so much talent, so many guys coming in and out the roster. He had to try to craft something as systematically to make everything work. And that's that's the challenge with these head coaches being on these super teams is because you never know. Guys are going to get hurt. So you got to readjust this and you got to readjust that, you know, and I think he's doing a great job at it so far. Again, they're not a great team right now, you know, but no. they're, they're figuring it out and they're still, they're still, I think right now, what number seven in the Western conference, maybe. Yeah. They seven to five. So they probably six. Yeah. six to seven yeah. To five. yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it's only, it's only going to get better once the best player on this team gets back in LeBron, you know, only, only question there is how we're going to make, LeBron and Russ fit together. But yeah, last night was a very impressive win for him. Um, not not really impressive, actually, because no one, it wasn't even, it wasn't even indicate, it wasn't, it didn't indicate that they're gonna, you know, it, but it was it was a good win because you got to see your role players play at a very high level. You mentioned Wayne Allington and uh, who else you mentioned, Malik Monk and 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 those guys. So Avery Bradley, yeah. you know, you yeah. want to see that type of stuff. Yeah, I'll say it was encouraging. That's you can I'll say yeah. like it was very encouraging win, even though they didn't what Jimmy Butler wasn't playing, it was just good to see them be Ben down in the game and the ability yep. to come back like that knockdown shots that's yep. encouraging but yeah yeah we can we can talk about the best team in the league right now record wise you know the warriors they 10 and 1 yes sir what you, yeah what you, got, what you got to say about them i mean i don't think anybody saw this good of a start you know like right now i think they're top five in terms of offensive rating and number one in terms of defensive rating and nine and one that's good for six straight wins this team is, I mean, this team is amazing, honestly. Um, you know, I, I, yeah. I think a they big ten, question. They I, ten and one. They ten and one now. Ten and one after that win last night. They did yeah. just beat. Uh, they beat um uh the Timberwolves. Oh, the Timberwolves. At, yep. It's been great to see. Um, and it's not even. I mean, Curry's obviously been what he's been, and we talked about him a couple episodes ago. But there are nights where Curry's just not dominant, and guys are picking up the slack. You know, Jordan Poole has been picking up the slack. You know, his numbers are great, and he's had get like I like Curry's gonna have those nights, and we even see it saw it as MVP seasons where he just was like probably just at 20 points or he was scoring under 20. But this this team has guys who can step up. You know, Jordan Poole is what I'm gonna give his numbers 17 18. points on okay. 18, basically 18. Um, on 44% shooting and the three-point shot is like 32%, but he takes a good amount of them. I think upwards of like five a game. Jesus, one game he took like 16 threes. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's showing a willingness to step up. And I didn't think I I I think last season we knew we kind of saw, okay, this dude can end up being something, but I don't think we saw this type of leap happening to where there are just times where you're looking at him, you're like, okay, we can actually rely on this dude uh, you know, to be a second option on a lot of nights. And as I said, you know, Clay's coming back, and I, they say Clay's, I think as early as December 20th, I think that was the date yeah, that, that before was before Christmas before Christmas they said. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully that you said 16-3. Yeah, he took 16. I think it was against OKC. He went, uh, let me make sure I ain't tripping here because sometimes yeah, he took 16 against OKC or against the Hornets. He was seven for 16, so he made most of them. So okay. um, but okay. even even last night, he took 11, only made two. So for him, yeah. So for him, that's kind of why you're glad that Clay is going to be back because for him, he's going to be a question. We know he's a good second option now, but can he be a good second option when it comes to the playoffs? I don't think so yeah. because he's young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The thing is, they – Bro, they have so much. They still have Moses Moody coming sooner or later. He's going to be playing because he's drafted. So he's probably going to not get that much time. But they got Kaminga. They have uh, Wiseman still has to come back. They, Bro, yeah. it's like somebody's going to get benched. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, even so, you know, like I'm glad you mentioned Wiseman. You know, like that gives you another big edge on the defensive end. Those guys, those rookies aren't going to play. You know, I think I pretty yeah, much, yeah. I think I think I pretty much, I, I pretty much 
like live. I'm, li- I'm going to live with the fact that they're just not going to get time. I saw Moses Moody get garbage time. Um, and I saw uh, Kaminga, I think, is in the G League right now, you know. So I- I'm living with that. Yeah. Because, but they're so they're so deep right now. And it's not even like they're just deep. Like, why would like why would I play Moses Moody right now over like an Andre Godala or over a uh, um, who's another who's another guy that's playing really well at the bench over Nemanja Bjelica? Well, Wiggins, but Wiggins, Wiggins is playing. I don't know if he took something before the game yesterday. He was high. He was, he yeah, was yeah. He got a he got his thirty five, and that's good for him, you know. Because uh, I mean him. I mean, like I said, right now I don't want to say sit here and act like Andrew Wiggins or Jordan Poole are the second option. But as we say with the Lakers, it's just great to know that you're going to have reliable scores outside of your best two players. The most beautiful thing about it all too is how well they just run that system. Like the the, the seed guys like Jordan Poole and a lot of the young players to be able to come in and then run that system to perfection. I always say I think Steve Kerr is the best X's and O's coach as far as as far as coaching goes. The best X's and O's guys and guy in the NBA. You know, as far as the plays he draws up, um, the actions he's getting and all of that those guys come in and they run it at a very very high level you know and, and they, they get great high percentage looks every single time you know so a lot of credit goes to Kurt too but you know it's really their depth um you know I mentioned Bialicia playing well I mentioned you know I think Damian Lee's are averaging like 11 off the bench Otto Porter Jr you know is shooting it very well coming off the bench as well and gives them a little bit of a defensive edge there may be a guy missing as far as bench scores go uh uh, Gary Payton, I mean, not really doing a lot of scoring, but Gary Payton Jr. has been great on the defensive end. You know, Iguodala, great on the defensive end. So they're just a, t- a really deep team. And, and as I said, it's going to yeah. get much scarier once uh, Clay Thompson is back in this lineup. This this team is ridiculous. And, and if you doubted that they were a championship contending team before, uh, I, I think you got to wipe those doubts away because, like I said. You yeah. wake up. Wake yeah. up. Yeah. Only thing up. I would say is, is they have been playing some – Bad teams by record. That's the only thing That's I want to see. I want to see. The, I want to see them play teams that aren't Detroit, that aren't yeah. the Kings, that aren't uh, Minnesota. You know, I want to see them play like teams like uh, Miami, uh, the Bucks. Yeah. You know, uh, what's another? I'm drawing blanks. Another good. The Suns. See, they haven't played teams like that yet. Yeah. They've been playing against these younger teams. The kind of record are kind of boo boo. So. Yeah, only good team. Only really good team they've beaten was the Clippers they, on opening night. Oh, yeah, they did yeah. beat the Lakers, too. Yeah, but that was also – that was kind of like the first Lakers game, yeah. so we don't really – you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had really – they had a lot of – out of those 10 wins, they haven't really had faced good teams, really. So, yeah. OKC on there, too, they faced, so you know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that is something we have to see, and that's something I think another team's kind of going through that we're not really 100% confident about what they're doing because they haven't really played any tough teams just yet. Uh, I'm trying – there's another team who hasn't played anybody good, and they're good right now. I can't I can't wrap my mind around it. But, yeah, I'd like to see what they do as far as competition goes. Um, You know, once you start playing guys who have better individual defenders, you know, how is Jordan Poole going to be able to adjust, you know, if some yeah. of his shots are taken away? Because we know an issue with go- that can end up happening is, you know, you go play those really good teams and – you know, Curry ends up having, you know, they end up finding a way to stop Curry and keep him doing this thing. Cause a lot of what Curry is, a lot of what Curry's able to do is because he's got great options around him who can make both things happen. If you take away Steph Curry, you know, some, and you got to force those other guys to play well against other great individual defenders, you know, that's going to, that's something we've got to still see. Um, and we're going to see it at his highest level when they start going and yeah. playing those more competitive teams. So yeah, that's a good, that's a good point to bring up. Cause they haven't even played like Utah or anything like that. No, either. So, yeah. So like once once you get once you got to play uh, against good defenders like Mikael Bridges and then yeah. uh, on Utah uh, Eric Pascal, see dudes like that. I don't know if I'm going to be as confident as I am. Right. We'll see. That be yeah. when they can when they beat teams like that. That's when I'll know. Okay, we you know you know what I'm saying. That's the. T- that's the test. That was kind of that's the team I was thinking about earlier, Chicago. Chicago kind of had that issue a little bit earlier. Now they went out and got a couple of quality wins, so you can't really say that anymore. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah man. I, I, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say before you talk, y'all didn't have some y'all decent win. I like to see y'all like not face Cleveland though. That was kind of. But yeah, but we but shit. We beat we beat the Bucks. I mean, they were without Chris Middleton, but we still beat them. We beat uh. Uh, we beat. I'm trying. I'm kind of trying to remember Celtics. some of the key wins we got. Celtics. You yeah, Celtics. we 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 did beat the Celtics. Yes, we did. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy about us. But yeah, I mean, bring it circling right back to Golden State. Um, you know, yeah, comp- I'm glad you mentioned the competition thing because that's something I definitely did forget about, and that's something to keep an eye on. There's always, no matter what in the NBA, it's always something you can rain on somebody's parade with. You know, like somebody could be ten and one, you can be yeah. like, y'all ain't play. Yeah, it's always gonna be something. Um, but I like body. Yeah. 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 
But I like what they've done. Uh, Curry is once again shutting everybody up because I still will never forget that people were acting like Steph Curry can't do nothing without Kevin Durant, as if he didn't have two MVPs before Kevin Durant got there. Um, you know, and, and like I said, you're, having, you're going to have 50-point games and all of that. Um, and you're shooting from half court, you know, whenever you, you know, it's like, it, it's Steph Curry, you know, I don't really need to say much about it. So it's like mm-hmm. to see him doing that mm-hmm. and to see him right back, to see him right back into this position to where he's going to, he's making another, like he's making another case for being an MVP, just like he did last season, you know? So mm-hmm. shout out, shout out Steph Curry. Yeah. Just said he's been in rare form, you know, like saying that he's in rare form yeah, right. right now. I meant to yeah. ask y'all, I mean, it's, it's too early. I meant to, I was going to ask y'all like, um, it's too early. I was going to, I was going to say, uh, uh, Curry from last year, Curry from this year, who's better, but it's way too early. So we still have to see. Um, yeah. it's just, I was gonna. I didn't want to give Curry the MVP last year, especially if he didn't make it. That was based yeah. off what, like, make the playoffs. Because yeah. you know he was playing as good as Jokic was, if not better. It's just the fact that if your team doesn't make the playoffs. It's not baseball. You're not gonna make. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna win the MVP. So right. Yeah. 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 Shout out to the Warriors, man. Shout out to Warriors. And like I said, they're going to be that much better when Clay is back. Um, those guys know how to run that system. Kerr is once again showing his ability to coach and manage a group of guys and get him to buy into the system. You know, he got I mean, he got everybody on that roster after Mark Jackson left or got, got fired. Everybody on that team bought into the system and immediately started winning. So that's one thing, you know, Kerr really excels at. Right now, he's my head runner, my, my um, front runner for coach of the year, too. Uh, you know, so shout out to him and, and uh, you know, more power to what they've been able to do. Um, and also, like I said before, yeah. shout out to Gary, shout out to Gary Payton. That dude's that dude's uh, he, he should be in the dunk contest this year for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say I don't know why you put you put uh, I don't know. I put Wes Unsell at one. I'm gonna put the coach. Okay, okay. Coach at one. Let me put him at one. I'll put Wes Unsell Jr. Yeah, at one. Cause he, yeah, because he, he got he got Kuzma in the right spot playing. You know how we knew we can play. You know, if he's mm-hmm. in a consistent role, you know, Montre has been a dog, as they say. Yeah. So yeah. I give him the spot. I give him the spot. Give a little credit to my team. I'm glad. I'm glad y'all give him credit. But we also, I mean, we have we having a nice little stretch of games, and Brad isn't even doing his thing. Like Brad's not really shooting it efficiently. It just goes to show you once again, goes to show you how important it is to have that supporting cast. You know, our supporting cast playing great. Trez playing great. You know, Spencer's had some off nights, but some nights we've been okay. We haven't really seen that explosion yet from Spencer Dinwiddie, which is kind of disappointing because he's a guy that. We always knew, we always knew then what he had all-star level talent, yeah. you know, and he'll get there at some point. Still waiting for that explosion to happen. But as you mentioned, Kuzma's been great. You know, last night he was amazing against Cleveland, made pretty much the game winning shot. Uh Raul Neto he or Neto. He couldn't he, he couldn't hit him for us. I know that man. You sure wasn't hitting him for y'all. He gave y'all a game winner in the bubble. I don't know if it was in a playoff game though. Was that a playoff yeah, game no, he made it? It wasn't a playoff game. It was right before the playoff started against them. Yeah. Yeah, so it didn't really count. It didn't really, it didn't really matter that much. Yeah, I wish him, I wish him well though. Yeah, he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy for my guys right now. We're also, I, I, like I said, I admit that I'm very surprised. It's still early. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Um, I was stressed out. I was watching that Cavs game last night. I follow like a Wizards, um, I follow a Wizards page, and he was like IG mm-hmm. live in the game. I was stressed out as hell because it was, it, it was close. I think we won by like one or two or something like that, and that uh, we had to play defense well in that last possession against the Cavs to get the win. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad to be like rooting for my team. I, I'm glad to have that feeling back to where I'm stressed out game in and game out because I know the games matter. I, I had it a little bit last season. I, I had it last season, but it's a little different this year. This has probably been the most excited I've been about the Wizards uh, since maybe like 20, maybe 2017, I think it was. Uh, yeah, that's the most, yeah. probably the most hyped I've been. So, yeah. Yeah. My only thing about these teams that I don't like that with basketball, especially with the NBA, they allow teams that are under 500. It's a possibility they can make the playoffs. Like, I don't yeah. like that. Like you, you thirty seven and forty two, and you making the playoffs. Are you? Are, do you think? Are you? Or do you think it should just end up being like by record? Like, but that's also it's going to be weird because you have to give an equal amount. Like, it, it, I don't know how you work it outside of that because you'd have to go eight teams from this conference and eight teams from the other conference to make the matchups yeah. make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now you can they, you was, can eliminate the you can eliminate the play in to like stop incentivizing teams to play like like I don't think you know like you can eliminate the play in but if you I mean if yeah. you top eight you top eight you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's no way around that. Yeah. Around I mean you can go back to having four teams playing these conference like Bill Russell days, you know, and get and get and get like a get like a one month playoff or something like that or like a month and, and a half you playoff. Win, you win you win two games you win the finals. Just yeah, like yeah. NCAA tournament style. We could go NCAA tournament style and just go everybody, everybody NBA just play. Everybody do it. Everybody get a shot at it. Who knows? There's I a mean, lot of. Way, a lot. 
Yeah, that that probably won't work out that way because anybody could beat anybody in one game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. They should. They now they could. This would be longer. They could do a best out of three. That'd be a lot of basketball. Yeah. Oh, best out of. Oh, best, best out, out of three, three for, for every team. Yeah, that'd be a lot of basketball. That'd be though. that'd be, that'd be a hell of basketball. They have to end the season in like like late February or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, shout out to my Wizards, bro. We've been getting it in. Like I said, I'm very surprised. Um, Beal's not having the year that I expected him to have yet. Like, but he's he'll he'll find his stride at some point. Biggest thing is that we're winning. Uh, I think Trez been the player I'm most happy about on this team so far this season. Uh, another team I wanted to talk about uh, the Clippers. I think right now they're sitting at the sixth spot in the Western Conference. Let me check my numbers one more time just yeah. to make sure I'm accurate. No, you accurate. Um, I just saw it. Yeah, sixth uh, spot in the West, one spot above you guys. Um, and they are one of the best defensive teams in the NBA, which I think we kind of expected. I mean, the, even without Kawhi being being there, I think we expected this team to still be good on the defensive end. Um, you know, Eric Bledsoe was kind of the big pickup they got. Um, you know, Serge Ibaka hasn't played much, you know, but yeah, and so I can't even say his name because he hasn't contributed much to their defense because he hasn't played a ton. Um, offensively, they haven't been very good, but like I said, they're six in the West, and Paul George has been great this year. And we talked about Paul George uh, just a little bit. Um, a couple, maybe a couple minutes ago, when we were talking about the Warriors, uh, but George been off to this great start, making looking like another run for an MVP award. Um, right now, he's averaging 27 points on 46% shooting and 36% shooting from three, eight rebounds. And the most impressive number to me is the five assists and two steals a game, or really three steals a game. We want to round up from 2.7 up to three. Uh, yeah. I mean, where 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 would you put Paul George right now on your MVP list? Well, especially when you look at those numbers on both ends, because that two steals a game is kind of crazy. Mm. Let me see. Jaws kind of fell back down to earth a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you think you think is he above Ja right now? I would I would make the case that I put him above Ja because I think the Clippers for them. To, I, I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, the Clippers the Clippers don't have a better record than the Grizzlies right now. Let me make sure. Um, actually, they do. So, yes, the Clippers yeah, have a better record. Yeah, 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 I was about to say that. I was about to say this because when I looked, I was like, I ain't see them. Uh, yeah, I, w- I would probably put it because, you know, Jaws, not to say Jaws can't, you know, claim it back from Steph because, you know, we all have to go crazy, which he's proven he's capable of how he started out the season. So, yeah, yeah I put football Drew a second on that list. And Steph, Steph would be your one? Yep, yep, okay. yep. It's great to see him get back to this because just two years ago we were everybody in the everybody in the sports world was shitting on him, you know, rightfully so, rightfully so. Yeah, I was too. I was too. Blake was. Everybody was. Like I said, rightfully so. He, you, you, if you, you know, if you have bad playoff series, you got it coming to you. But um, it's, this season, yeah, it's. I don't think it wasn't even a bad bad playoff game. You have a shot in your professional basketball point, and you hit the side of the backboard. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, he's redeemed himself. You know, last year, you know, when Kawhi went down, he stepped up. And I know they lost in, what, the conference finals. But Mm -hmm. end of the day, he stepped up, you know, and he helped. I mean, he was the best player on the team that closed out maybe the one seed in the Western Conference in the second round. Utah was the one seed in the West last year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so he was able to do that. It wasn't all him, but he had help, obviously, with Terrence Mann but every, and everything. But, you know, I think Paul George right now is kind of reinventing the narrative about himself. You know, some people said he – People, it's like people always forget that he was – people forget the type of player he was before uh, the OKC trade. You know what I'm saying? He was a guy that was leading his team to the conference finals, and he had all-star – yeah, all-star seasons. Then, obviously, the injury happened, and he was able to come back and recover. Then, you know, like I said, goes to OKC and almost wins an MVP title, you know, and then everything in between then. But, you know, it was great to see him kind of reinvent the narrative about himself. And like I said, he's – as far as talent goes, he's probably just a top six, seven player in the NBA. We're talking about just offensive skill set, you know, can score on multiple levels, yeah. can defend at a high level, all of those things. So I'm glad to see Paul George kind of uh, not reinvent himself but turn that narrative back, um, you know. I, but – I feel like we've everybody's known that Paul George. Have you always been confident in Paul George as a first option? Like, let me ask you that. Like, do you, have you always been confident that he's a good first option? I was more confident when he was with Indiana. Yeah. After he left, and even with OKC at times, I'm like, I don't know. Even if he had a good season, that actually gave me confidence. But at pretty much after that OKC season, that's when it kind of started going down here as far as first option yeah. to me. Because yeah. I think, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Right now, he's. I don't know. It's tough to say because some nights he can give you 30 and he looks like a first option, but then other nights you kind of you kind of just wonder, is he a second option player, 
first option player because people yeah. can average 30 and still be a second option. I know that sounds yeah. messed up, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brad Beal, like there's, I mean, still questions if Brad Beal is a legitimate first option. And then, like I said, you, okay, you can be a first option to a certain extent. Right now, Jonas Valanciunas is averaging 20 points and 15 rebounds. He, he's only a first option for a team that's going to win under 300-something games or whatever, or is going to have a winner percentage like under 300, you know? So yeah. you, he's a first option to an extent, and I think that furthest extent is maybe being a first option on a first or second round playoff team. I think that's what the extent is for him. Um, and, and like I said, yeah. at the, good, the good part about it, the bright side is while he's playing as well, it's great to have to see him be able to get this confidence back that I never really thought he had with the Clippers. I never thought he was super, super comfortable. Same with Kawhi. Like I never really thought he was super comfortable and confident yeah. with himself since that move happened. Um, but it's good to see yeah. him, you yeah. know, play like this. And, and I think, sorry about that. And I, I think, you know, once, if Kawhi ends up coming back for the playoffs, you know, to see him have that mojo and all of that, matching it with Kawhi, they're going to be that much more dangerous if he does, if Kawhi does end up coming back. I got to see it to believe it with the Clippers. It's just him and Kawhi, I don't know what it is. It's just like, if not, if he doesn't come back by this season and say it come by, Kawhi comes back by next season, then they still don't get where they want to go. I am personally, if I'm the owner, I'll personally think about breaking the team up because at that point, you're paying all this money and you want them to win. Obviously, it's not happening. So I don't yeah. know what you want to do, but... Listen. It's one of the it's one of the weirdest teams in basketball. Like the, the I, I always say, I remember the night that they made that move happen, where they managed to pick off both Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. I remember saying yeah. this team should this this if this team should end up winning a title this coming season, and they should end up becoming one of the best defensive teams of all time. And then it just net that first year, uh, you know, I mean. I feel like also the bubble kind of got in their way that first year they were together. I, I'll say that much. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then a lot of the, people, a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't really like that bubble stuff because you're isolated. You're in the same spot. It was mentally yeah. draining for a lot. Yeah. Of people. Yeah. So okay, is there? I, and then you got the second year where Kawhi goes out, and who knows what they would have done if they were healthy against the Suns? Who they could have went to the finals? So maybe, may, maybe this Clippers thing isn't as disappointing as I thought it was because I just feel like they had a bunch of unfortunate situations thrown in their face. I think that's really mm-hmm. what it is, and not not everything is just the Clippers couldn't do this or whatever. I think a lot of BS got thrown in the franchise's face, and that's why they never really got to reach their full potential. Um, and same thing this year, right? Like even if Kawhi comes back and they end up getting first rounded again or like second round or whatever the situation is going to be, <laughs> we're gonna we're we're gonna look at it and be like okay well they didn't get it they never had a healthy Kawhi the whole season so Kawhi was never really yeah. comfortable so they've had three I mean, years of they've had three years of valid excuses I think I think so I mean well they lose if they lose I love it so I don't know really yeah know. yeah I want to isn't it lose. Isn't it disappointing that we never really got to see that Clippers Lakers rivalry get anywhere past? Because I, I remember that was the thing everybody was talking about when that move happened. We never got that that rivalry at its peak. We only got them. We only got to see them go at it for real in like the regular season or whatever. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. And the thing about the regular season games, where I feel like people overrated each win on both ends. Because yeah. once the Clippers beat us that first opening night, like two that was two years ago. It seems like five yeah. years, but that happened. Yeah. Two years ago, they were like. Oh, LeBron doesn't look athletic. AD doesn't want it. And then we beat them. Oh, the Lakers going to the final. I'm like, bro, it's a regular season game. I've seen dudes sweep teams in regular season and get blown out by them in the playoffs. So Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. I agree. I agree. It is it, 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 it's rough, man. I was like, man, we really want to see that playoff series happen and never did. And the games we got in that first year, like you said, they were just regular season games. But the games we got in that first year when Kawhi and Katie or Kawhi and Paul George were there, they were good ass games. Like that game one that a season opener yeah. was good as hell. Christmas Day was that Christmas Day game was lit. Yeah, they, you know they were all four, they were all fourth quarter games, meaning yes. like the game was close going to the fourth quarter. So yeah, we definitely got some good games out of them. I just like to see Kawhi get come back because you know he's like people talk about Andy Davis being injury prone Kawhi is definitely on the same level as him in terms of you know you yeah. can't really I don't know if you can count on him to play 20 games or 15 games in a row yeah very true very true and that, that, that's the thing about Kawhi is like we want to say he's a top five player in the NBA talent wise he is and he had a he had a season when he won a championship and proved it and I mean, arguably by some, he was the best player in the NBA after he won that title, but it's all these injuries. So we don't really know where to place him at. So I don't know what his timetable is for real. I don't even know if he comes back this season, but as I mentioned, if he does end up coming back, um, you know, hopefully he comes back and he finds his rhythm. It'll be weird to just plug him in during the playoffs though. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it'll, it'll be really weird to just plug him in there without any, any real reps. 
Um, but even that ACL news was so abrupt. Like it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like nobody really knew it. I don't think, I don't think too many people knew it when they came out with the report. They, I think Clippers tried to hide it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like they're trying always... to hide the information because he wasn't playing. He didn't play for four games straight. Then four games became eight games straight. And we were like, okay, he's not going to play. Like there's right. no way. It's no, it's no way. So he, yeah. I think everybody trying to figure it out themselves. It must be a serious injury. And the Clippers weren't saying nothing because like, they're playing and they wanted them to game plan against Kawhi and Kawhi not go yeah. there. So they were trying to play <laughs> games with the other teams. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Hope they get it right. But like I said, they've been impressive. I mean, like I said, I don't I don't expect anything out of them this year. They don't get Kawhi back. And even if they do, like I said, they got another excuse because it's just going to be weird. To, it's going to be weird to just plug him in and expect him to be productive and be and be the original Kawhi Leonard that we all knew he could be, you know, or whatever. It's, it's going to be weird. So I, they, they, they like I said, it's been disappointing, but they have three years of legitimate excuses. Year one was the bubble. Year two was the Kawhi injury. As I said, who knows what they would have done, you know, if they had Kawhi healthy for that Western Conference final series against Phoenix. Yeah. Who knows, you know? Yeah, I, I would have been a Bucks fan. I know that. i tell you that much in the final. Would you, would you have enjoyed a Clippers Bucks series over a uh, Suns Bucks series? No, I feel like um, this is a big if. If, if, if Serge Ibaka, wasn't Serge Ibaka hurt in the playoff too? He had back problems, I think. I think he missed. He missed. I, I know he missed a good amount of games. I know he missed yeah, a good he, amount of games. He, he had like back. He had like very bad back stiffness or something. So if he would have yeah. played against them, he would have. He would have been another body to throw at Giannis. I think they honestly could have beat him, probably. Maybe. Yeah. Could have went with the thing where also we put Kawhi on Giannis, and then we saw what happened last time in the playoffs where Kawhi got put on Giannis. You know, yeah. saying that ain't turned out too yeah. well for Giannis. Yeah, it's just the only thing with Giannis. He got better at picking his spots where to score. True. And they did what I told them they need to do. Stop letting them be point guard. Yeah. Just because you're seven feet, that don't mean you always got to be a point guard. There's no. Yeah. I remember that was a thing where everybody was experimenting with everybody to be in a point guard. Like, I, I remember that was a thing that started happening. I was like, that ain't going to work. Yeah. Um, some, yeah. some, 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 sometimes it, sometimes you're at your best when you play the position that your height says you should be. Mm. Very true. Very true. Can't make everybody can't make everybody a one. Um, yeah. So shout out to the Clippers. I, uh, Reggie Jackson's kind of been their second option right now, you know, and he hasn't even Steve. been. Yeah, yeah, Steve. Stephen from Django, Stephen from Django. Uh, yeah, I mean, he hasn't really <laughs> been super. He hasn't really been super. I mean, efficient. He's had his nights, but again, you know, I just this is more about just Paul George and what he's done than the Clippers as a whole because it's it's just hard to expect anything from him in the Western Conference when their best player isn't you know doing what he needs to do where it isn't there you know so all in all pg's playing great uh he's making another legitimate run uh at that mvp award something we've seen him do before um and, and hopefully he can keep it going it's gonna, it's gonna be tough to stay within that sixth spot or the you know within the top five or whatever in the western conference especially when a lebron gets back especially when a clay gets back and all of that um but hopefully they'll be able to figure out and um uh, try to manage yeah. uh last night is just getting some reactions to it we had uh the first regular season actual nba k cunningham versus Jalen green matchup we remember how good that that matchup was in the summer league it was lit as hell and it was the, pretty much the same last night what were your reactions to that to that game uh really not even talking about the rockets and the pistons because i could give a damn about what the whole teams did i was focused yeah. on those two guys so what were your reactions um Really just based off of what you saw when those two guys went at it. Yeah, Jalen Green had like, you know, 23. You know, K had, I think it was, 20, no, it wasn't 18. It was 20. He yeah. had about 20. And he actually shot a better percentage from the field than uh, Jalen Green did. The thing yeah. with Jalen Green is he's going to get up his shots. At a high, like, yeah. he's, he's not, he's going to shoot. But yeah. I don't know. I, if you, if you, if you pay, if you give me some money, I, I'll be willing to put my money on. I think K is going to be the better overall player, but maybe yeah. Jalen Green is going to be the more polished offensive player. Yeah. So what my thoughts on the game last night, it was a pretty good game, but I just think overall probably the Pistons, I, I think the Pistons are going to be a better team going forward to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's all funny. It's it's funny because we all, me and Blake, thought those two were actually legit going to make the playoffs, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't look like it right now at all. Like it's just, it's, I'm, I'm gonna tell. I was just gonna tell the people they were one and eight, and then what's the name one and uh Pistons one one and eight last night, and Houston was one and nine. So yeah, yeah, these aren't playing out tight playoff teams, but that's not really, you know, that's not that I think it's better that they're not because it just gives those guys more time to develop. But I was a fan of the matchup, and you talk about individual skill sets. One thing Cade does better than Jalen Green is pacing himself. Jalen Green was killing Cade in that third quarter. Cade could have easily came back on some like 
rookie shit and tried to like get him back or whatever, but he stayed patient, you know, and that's something he showed at least showed a lot of maturity, especially kind of as a point guard, letting the game, you know, come to him and, and being patient and, and not rushing anything. It seemed like anytime Jalen Green would go at him, it wasn't his priority to come back and respond directly to him. It was kind of his priority to get the best, you know, yeah. get, get the best play down the other end. And so that's one thing I love about Kay's game. And that's pretty much why he was able to take, why he was able to take over in the, in the fourth quarter late in that one. And, and also like they came back, you know, they were down most of that game and they came back and got a win. I don't know if it was by double figures, but I know they did come back down by, I think as most as 10 um, and, and, and ultimately ended up winning the game. So, you know, that's good. That's great to see from, uh, you know, from your rookie. And, and Kay, his last three has really started picking it up. You know, after everybody swore to God that he was a bust and this ain't going to work and he ain't, you know, you know how people are, you know, but he picked it up, man. He started doing his thing. And that's what you want to be able to see from your young point guard. So still a lot to learn from. That's why you're on a bad team. So you're, and you're going to have a lot of opportunities to learn. He's got a great coach to learn from. Dwayne Casey is still a hell of a head coach. Um, You know, like like his last time he was on a good team, he was a, he was coach of the year and they fired him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. That, that's just the LeBron effect. You know, we fire our coaches. We get coaches fired. Get coaches, make we coaches lose their job, including yeah. on your own team, including on your own team. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Remember David Black? <laughs> we was winning a lot of games. He still got. David Black was gone up out of there. They was thinking about firing Tyron Lue, too. Like, I was like, damn, he almost oh, went through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, but K, yeah, he didn't really let the – drama of your number one pick and two pick come to him. Jalen Green, I think he lets by that go to his head because he make one yeah. play. He'd be like, oh. Yeah. I'm like, dude, calm down. He had that dunk. But that dunk, remember he went like baseline and dunked it. He, when he jumps, he's like, he's like, he like takes a second gear when he jumps. I don't know. I, I can't he, explain he, it. He he got off the floor so quick, but Kay was like, he was like. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was yelling he at him. Yeah, I, I like it though. I like it though. I like the energy. Uh, and and Jalen Green is hungry because he legitimately is disappointed that he was number two overall. Like a lot of guys that say, "Well, I'm number two. Like a lot of guys, I don't think a lot of guys. I, I don't think it's been as apparent that a dude's disappointed that he went number one, number two overall. It hasn't been that apparent in a while. You know, he's legitimately pissed that he went number two. And those guys are friends or whatever. You know, but I, I like I like yeah. You think they friends? I don't know if they. I think they might be cordial with each other. I don't know if they're friends. I, they I don't may know. Be. On some AAU shit, they may be friends. They may be because okay. you know them. You know them AAU dudes be knowing each other. But I think it's. I think it's a good rivalry, and I think it's good competition. And to see that, to see, I, I get excited when I see stuff like that, and it tells you about the future of the league for sure. You know, like we haven't had a yeah. leap out of the. We haven't had a, a like two draft picks go at it, and we've been legitimately excited about them two playing. We haven't had that in a minute. You know, I have you th- like what's the last time you saw two draft picks go at it and you were just like so hyped about just seeing I've I, like Years. I don't think ESP yeah, I would think ESPN has even matched up two teams where you had the number one, number two overall pick going head to head. You know, I don't think yeah. we've had that in a minute, maybe. Yeah, probably we haven't had that in a long time. But yeah, I think yeah. I don't know. I just think um K yeah, K's more laid back. He's gonna let the game come to him, he's gonna pace himself instead of just going out there and trying to go like you know, full speed and kind of out of yep. control. Jalen Green can be out of control sometimes, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I think yeah, Jalen he, Jalen Green, he's a rookie. He'll learn. He just got to learn to like just pace himself and don't always just shoot shoot the best shot you can get available. Don't give the defender the benefit of the doubt by taking the tough shot all the time. Yeah, he takes tough shots. And even his open shots, too. You mentioned it last episode. I would like for his form to get a little bit better. Like, there was some... He, 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 he's a he. It's not a shot. Yeah, yeah. And he's... I, I can definitely... Next season, is. I can tell you, I can guarantee you 100% his shot form is going to look different. There's no way... There's no way yeah. his shot form is going to look the same next yeah, year. because he had a highlight clip and people in the high, uh, highlights... I think ESPN posted that. Somebody in the comments said, he just be shooting shit, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he do be he do be putting him up, but uh, yeah, I mean he's been he's been great, and like I said, you know, for scores, especially young scores, it's gonna take him a minute to really get comfortable with everything, and it's it's gonna take him a minute. We saw with Anthony Edwards, we mentioned this last episode, but we saw with Anthony Edwards, yeah, we saw with him, you know, he was inefficient, still is inefficient, inefficient for most of, most of this season, uh, you know, but like I said, you got to give these guys time. I was satisfied with that matchup though, you know, and that's ESPN. I, th- I mean, I, they picked some pretty shitty games so far this year to put on national Terrible. television. Yeah, Terrible. I, I think the Pelicans played on national TV once, and that was one too many times. So, you know, yeah. uh, but I, I, this this was one. I, I, I think it's like a priority for them now to show more young teams. Like I think they heard that as like a complaint or whatever, because uh, everybody complains about people not talking enough about the young teams or the bad teams or whatever you want to say. And they've shown a yeah. lot of young teams on national television now. So. Yeah. 
Hornets, Hornets been playing a lot. Uh, Timberwolves been having games every now and then. Yeah. Um, I would like to see Indiana play a little bit more on TV. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, listen, to some other young teams. Uh, the the Kings. Yeah, the the Kings don't get no game. Damn right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but they, but they still got De'Aaron Fox. I want to see him play sometime. Yeah. I feel like God. don't people yeah people don't know how good they are. they're ninth right now they're gonna be lower than that but um they're ninth they're, they're watchable they're definitely watchable if, you got Davion Mitchell yeah they are if the Aaron Fox somehow gets them in the playoffs and Lord knows one day you know I don't see that's why I say Lord knows so I, don't, I don't know but if he ever in his life gets them a championship he he will be praised as, as the like the king of Sacramento I don't know that sound yeah. crazy I said Sacramento king. ah I see what you did there <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah, he would. It's not happening though. Like it is. I, I know, I know. He'll be. He'll be out of there. He'll be out of there soon. I mean, you even see the thing where Marvin Bagley, like they wanted to get him up. Like he, was, they tried to sub him in. He wouldn't come up. Mitch. It's so much turmoil going on. <laughs> there's also. There's also some. There's also some bright sides to it too. There's Mitchell. There's yeah. Halliburton. And there's all of that. So who knows what yeah. they end I'm up just, doing? I'm gonna just say because Blake Nair, I'm gonna just say they need to fire Luke Wall. That's the boy. That's Blake yeah. boy, Luke Wall. Yeah, that's that is. He hate that boy. Hey, look. Uh, that boy hate Luke Walton with a passion. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? You was, you was mentioned. We can mention real quick before me. Uh. Andy Edwards had a big. Yeah. Forty eight points last night. Forty eight. Yeah. And I didn't realize it until like probably midnight. He had forty eight points. I was like, huh? Nah. <laughs> they were talking so much about. They talked more about what Andrew Wiggins did last night than him. Um. Yeah. Bl- Blake sent the tweet, and then over his last couple of games, thirty points a game, four assists, three rebounds, two steals, a block on 46% shooting and 38% three-point shooting. This shows you, like, these types of moments give you glimpses into how great a guy is going to be in the future. Even if this little streak of efficiency ends, when you see guys do that, you know at some point in their career, that's going to be a consistent thing with them. You know what I mean? When you see younger players score 48 points, like I'm talking like they second year in, you know eventually that is going to go up and then they're going to find an even kill. They might average 31 season because we've right. seen it with players like D-Wade coming in. We've seen it with Carmelo. We've seen it with LeBron. Mm-hmm. Not to say he's going to be those players. You might you never know for real. Yeah. But we've seen it with LeBron. What's some other players? We've seen it with KD. It's yeah. Russ. Russ was one. You know, he wasn't yeah. an official shooter and he taught himself now he's back down. But yeah. he, he, he was an official shooter at one point. But yeah. 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 Sure. You know, and, and, and uh, while the Timberwolves have genuinely like I got excited, but I didn't get excited, you know, because I kind of we all knew it was coming. They were going to suck again. But was, he's been the yeah. yeah, he's been the bright spot. You know, he scores on a bunch of different levels and he's very like a very super deep offensive back. He's got the step back. He's got the mid range jumper. He's a great finisher around the basket. And also his athleticism is off the chain. He's had some of the best. He has some of the best dunks so far this season. So uh, Edwards is amazing, man. I hope he can keep it up. He's he is like the bright spot right now for Minnesota. I think Timberwolves fans all over the place have kind of. You know the meme where the, the Toy Story meme where someone's got the toy and they throw it away. That's kind of how t- I feel like that's how Timberwolves fans are right now, Carl Anthony Towns. Um, you know, where they're kind of like yeah. yeah, we're kind of like forget what he's done. You know, we've got Anthony Edwards now. So I mean it's cool, but uh, you know, he's been great and I, I, he can be he's gonna put up all-star caliber numbers when it's all said and done this season. He's not gonna be voted in as one, you know, but he's gonna have all-star caliber numbers, you know, by the end of the year without a doubt. So shout out to Anthony Edwards, dude's a hooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh yeah, Minnesota. I knew it. It's like they start off the season like four and one, then they lose six in a row. You know, they get yeah. to <laughs> they get to four and uh seven, then they win three in a row, then they lose two yeah. games in a row. That's how they work. So I don't know. Yeah. But there's yeah. no way, there's no way they should be this bad. Their defense is terrible. Yeah. And they had a point where they were I, yeah, now now I think they I think that's only uh, let me check check on this, but they were really good defensively to start the season off. Um, yeah, I know, let me see what, yeah. yeah, and they fell off. They fell off exponentially. They were like in the top five <laughs> right now, like probably a week later, they're at 17. So you know, it, you have to take some of these things with a grain of salt, bro. I'd be so hyped up. I'd be like, oh, this team two weeks in, they're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then shit happens. Like, it was like the Cavs last year. The Cavs had a good defense at one point, and they were good during the regular season, and they finally hit that stride where they just suck. So we see it all the time. I'm not really worried about what the hell Minnesota does this year. I just want to see those young guys shine. Uh, there are guys I'll see, I also want to see take leaps um, So uh, individually. So Timberwolves are what they are, but uh, shout out to the young guys they got. Shout out to Anthony Edwards especially. They are who we thought they were. Yeah, I'm sad. Not in a yeah. good way at all. Not in a good way. Yeah, I know. But hopefully, hopefully, some 
them in Sacramento, Tim, Timberwolves in Sacramento, hopefully somewhere down the line, they just figure out how to run an organization the correct way because they've been yeah. struggling bad. They, they, of course, the Timberwolves had that one year with uh, with Jimmy Butler, but to me, even though they made the playoffs, they barely made it with a team that good. They should have been a fifth, probably fifth or above seed, five or above seed, and they barely, they barely made the playoffs. I think a lot of it also is coaching selection. You know, like I think they have done a great job of building talent. You know, this team is very talented. I just don't think they've picked the best coaches at all. I haven't heard anything good about any Timberwolves coach, you know, and, and, and they're bad teams with good coaches. You know, Rockets, I mean, I don't know, Rockets fans love them, but people like Steven Silas, players love Steven Silas. They say nothing but great things about him. They're not a good team, but, but you just know when you got a bad yeah. coach that doesn't need to be there. So I think that's a situation with Minnesota. I never thought they had a great coach. I think Tib, Tibbs was there for that year or whatever it was. And he he's a, we all know he's a great coach. He just did it. Those guys weren't ready for that shit. Jimmy Butler was, but them other dudes weren't yeah. ready for it. So, yeah, man. They were crying in the, in the locker room. I heard. They, were, they weren't ready. They weren't ready for them laps. They they weren't ready for him. Yeah. But I thought about when you said Steven Silas, I thought about John Wall. He hasn't been playing yet. I forgot. I completely forgot about John Wall. That's he's boy. out the whole he's out the whole he's year. Out, he is? Yeah, they just gonna they just gonna sit him the whole year. They ain't even gonna play him. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know who's gonna, gonna take that contract though. Yeah, yeah. They may they may they're either gonna buy him out, it's gonna be a lot to buy him out for, or they're just gonna I don't know what the hell is gonna happen. Somebody, somebody gonna have to have it. Somebody gonna really need a damn point guard at some point to just say, "Let's go trade him." But it looks like yeah. it's most likely gonna end up resulting in a buyout because I think he accepted. They just accepted we're not gonna play you this year. So, I mean, he's making forty million. I'm sure he's okay with that. Yeah, he's he's perfectly fine with sitting down on a bad team and making forty mil. Uh, that does it for this episode. Uh, Blake is gonna be back hopefully uh, by Monday's show. Um, but don't forget y'all subscribe y'all we need one more subscriber to get to 200 bro let me make sure we got it let me, we might have it. Let's, just, let's see we may have that one I'm a, i got you i'm good like one more hey it's not coming hold on yeah we're, st- we're still we're still one down we're still one down um yeah i hate y'all hate huh yeah bro all, we need get all that we, look, look I, yeah. I know where this from get all that all that hate out your heart Get that, get that head out your heart, bro. We need that one subscriber to get the 200. Um, yeah. But don't forget also to download. And, and when you download on Apple Podcasts, leave a review too to help us out with the algorithm. Um, and follow us on our socials. Uh, yeah, what are you going to say? Say, so when, you know, Rams, you know, we got Odell today. You know, we putting all our chips. We we, we, we might go, we might win the Super Bowl. I don't want to jinx us. I don't want to say we're going there because, you know, that might, might jinx us. But we got Odell, you know, Von yeah. Miller. You know, we going to be there. To face uh Tom Brady, we go we go meet him. Yeah, I can't tell y'all two things about football, so I'm gonna just let him. I'm gonna let him talk about his squad a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. So yeah, y'all. Uh, thanks for watching, and we're gonna see y'all on Monday morning. Yeah. Peace.